Dog Pure Strategies News English Edition. Today for the highlights we got. The President of the Republic integrates the Dorale Desalination Plant. A deadly explosion in heart of providence in the international scene. That was our highlights. Welcome again to our newsroom. On the proposal of the Minister of the Interior of the files of the candidates which were presented to him, in a degree signed this afternoon by the President, cited that the list of candidates for the presidential election of April 9, 2021, is said as follows. Mr. Ismail Umar Gilly, UMP candidate, and Mr. Zakaria Ismail Farah, independent candidate. According to this degree, these elections will oppose two candidates. The current president and UMP candidate Ismail Umar Gilly and the independent candidate Zakaria Ismail Farah. Moving on, the head of state, His Excellency Mr. Ismail Umar Gilly, accompanied by the First Lady and President of the National Union of Djiburin Women, Mrs. Khadra Mahmoud Haid, officially cut the red ribbon of the desalination plant. More details in this following video. Drinking water from the sea is now possible. Perfectly drinkable water from the desalination plant, a plant that produces fresh water for the entire Djiburian population. An event that marks the collective consciousness of Djibouti, an objective that has been achieved and which is added to a series of innovations already set up by the government at the highest level. Within the framework of diversifying the production of drinking water, notably the program of water adduction from Ethiopia and the construction of numerous water dams, all of which militate in favor of the magnetization of the phenomenon of water shortage under our skies. It is within this framework that the head of state, His Excellency, Mr. Ismail Umar Gilly, accompanied by the First Lady and President of the National Union of Djiburian Women, Mrs. Khadra Mahmoud Haid officially cut the red ribbon of the desalination plant. This weather desalination plant, located in the camp of Dorale, and will contribute as soon as possible to ensure the supply of drinking water now. The president, always accompanied by the first lady, once the ribbon was cut, took a guided tour of this new plant, receiving all the necessary information about the sweeter desalination process. In other words, all the different stages, that is, the process of reverse omesis. The technique consists of applying a sufficiently high pressure to the quantity of water retained by a membrane, depending on the degree of salinity of the water in question, to obtain desalinated water downstream of the membrane. This plan has an estimated total production capacity of 22,500 cubic meters which can be easily expanded to 45,000 cubic meters per day. Financed by the European Union to the tone of 40.5 million euros and 5.5 million euros by the Republic of Djibouti. The Grail is the fruit of a successful collaboration between the Djiboutian government and the European Union. Our country's financial partner in this important development project, thus forming part of the integrated energy and water project known as PEPPER, one of the components of the sustainable energy for all in Yerev.
President of the Republic, His Excellency Mr. Ismail Umar Gale and the First Lady, Mrs. Khadra Mahmoud Haid, presided over today over the inauguration of the Drinking Water Protection Project by the Senate In order to meet the growing needs in drinking water in hygiene, Onyad has carried out major water supply projects from Utopia or major extensions and rehabilitation works of the drinking water and sanitation network. This project consists of four phases. The atmosphere here is quite outstanding. Uh, with the presence of various government personalities, this project is the latest in the chains of the development of our country, headed by His Excellency Mr. Smail Umar Gale. This day, panicated by local music, was a great event, indeed a national pride. The President of the Republic and the First Lady were welcomed by a round of applause, panicated by music, a moment charged with emotion. The dissociation plant will be an inexhaustible source of benefits for the population at a time when water resources are becoming sacred in the world. Djibouti is taking the lead in guaranteeing basic access to drinking water for its population. This integration ceremony was enhanced by the effective presence of the highest political and administrative authorities and partners, all of whom attended the ceremony. It should be noted that this Suera Dissemination Plant in Dorale will further connect the average Djiboutian to the prospect of having sufficient and quality water. Moreover, the objective is to consolidate and diversify the sources of drinking water supply to support the demand for the inevitable source to guarantee water security and to fight against the effects of climate change. In other words, to considerably reduce the water shortage, which is considered alarming by the authorities. Today, this desinalization plant will considerably change the situation for the Republic of Djibouti and its eventual future. <laughs> The President of the Republic, His Excellency Mr. Ismail Umar Gale, has delivered an important speech at the integration ceremony, where, has he, where he has talked about this new cornerstone on which our nation will be able to build its future more strongly by guaranteeing the population of Djibouti the first of its rights, that of being able to drink quality water and everyday incisive inequality. Let's listen to the President. Ladies and gentlemen, during the laying of the foundation stone of our desalination plant in 2018, I have highlighted the singular destiny that links the sea and our people since the dawn of time. We, Djiboutians, had for a long time dreamed of receiving from the sea that offers to us the substance in abundance, source of all life and all development. I had them brought in the name of our servant state. All my support to the teams who were going to undertake to take up this formidable challenge which allows to reconcile our traditions with the best of the technological modernity. I also set a course and a schedule and they have been kept. So, despite the difficulties along the way, here we are today gathered around the new cornerstone on which our nation will be able to build its future more strongly by guaranteeing the population of Djibouti the first of its rights, that of being able to drink quality water every day in sufficient quantity. On this remarkable day for Djibouti, I have a special thought for some urban areas particularly affected by water shortage, especially during the summer period. It is to put an end to this suffering that we have fought and explored all possible technical solutions. This water desalination of the sea is a source of life. It will be a source of development to grow our country and irrigate each of its projects, strain each of its members and bless, under the gaze of Allah, the merciful, all our businesses. I would like to assure of my gratitude the international institutions which made our dream possible and more particularly, the European Union, which trusted perseverance of our team. 
trust which allows us to hope very soon a new water treatment plant in Balbala. Because from now on, water and sanitation are the two legs on which our urban policy will walk more strongly to ensure our cities are healthier and more pleasant. Because from now on, water and sanitation are the two legs on which our urban policy will walk more strongly to ensure our cities a healthier and more pleasant environment. Our thanks go naturally to the European Union, which granted us the necessary help for this project to succeed. I would like to say that this great partner deserves the recognition and friendship of all Djiburians. I would also like to express my pride for the unceasing work of our Onya teams, which allows us today to integrate this factory that we have been waiting for with impatience. My warmest congratulations also goes to the Ifaj and Tediga companies and to many Djibouti companies that have contributed to the success of this magnificent project. The 22,500 meters of drinking water that we'll produce in the next few days and the 45 meters that we will soon produce thanks to the energy of the sun will allow us to see new projects grow and flourish in our oasis of peace and stability. So we have succeeded in this challenge and we have proved that Djibouti is capable of taking up new challenges. We are ready to welcome new investments and new innovations in our territory tomorrow to support our growth for the benefit of all and our regional influence. influence. Producing is good. Managing is even better. Not wasting water would save a lot of this precious resource. Let's act as a citizen. Let's preserve our natural resources. I thank you for your help. And speaking for this occasion and sharing his insights, one of the participants of this cornerstone event said the following. In this first, uh, first uh, uh, phase, we will produce 22,000 to 22,500 22, cubic meters per day. Uh, at the second st uh, phase, we will produce 45,000. Uh, this water will go from Dorale by a network of, uh, you can say, 10, 10, 10 kilometers of pipes from Dorale to Farhad. And from Farhad, we'll dispatch to Balbala and to Djibouti city. And we'll hope this quantity of water, this big, huge amount of water, will satisfy the, uh, the, this population in, in, the, in the summertime. In the summertime. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Moving on within the framework of the operation and management of the new railway line, the 10th meeting of the board of directors of ETU Djibouti Railway, the binational company in charge of railway operations, took place this Sunday, March 14, 2020, at Kempiski Palace Hotel in Djibouti. This meeting, co chaired by His Excellency Mr. Musa Mohammed Ahmed, Minister of Equipment and Transport of the Republic of Djibouti, and His Excellency Mr. Ahmed Mohammed, Minister of Economy and Finance of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, and Chairman of the Board of Directors, is part of the monitoring of railway activities and uh, periodic consultations between the two governments to constantly improve the performance of this new line. The meeting was attended by the members of the Board of Directors, namely Mr. Mohamed Robli Daher, Director General of the Djibouti Railway Corporation, Dr. Sinitiao Mekel, Director General of the Ethiopia Railway Corporation, and Dr. Girma Amante, former Minister and Vice President in the Rumia region, in charge of rural development. We are coming from two countries, like uh, the speaker before me, His Excellency Mr. Mohamud, uh, the General Director of Sheman Defer Djibouti, is also one of the board members. And uh, the three board members, including His Excellency Ahmed Shideh, the Minister of Finance, uh, is the chairman of the board of directors. So usually, according to the bilateral agreement, the board of directors, they should meet one in every quarter, in every three months. But due to the time constraint, sometimes, you know, the, the meeting is not happening. And uh, once if the meeting happens, for example, in Addis Ababa, next meeting should be in Djibouti. So that's why we are now holding our meeting in Djibouti. Still in the national context, the Minister of Communication in charge of Posts and Telecommunication, Radwan Abdullah Badon, received yesterday in his office the Ethiopian Minister of Finance, Ahmed Shiri, on a work and visit to Djibouti. 
The meeting between the Minister of Communication in charge of posts and telecommunication and his host was attended by the Director General of Djibouti Telecom, Mohamed Asawebu, and the Representative of Djibouti Telecom in Addis Ababa, Hassan Khere. Discussions between the Djibouti Minister of Telecommunications and his Ethiopian counterpart in charge of finance focused on straining bilateral relations. Radwan Abdullah Bahdon and Ahmed Sheikh, who did not fail to mention the state of cooperation between the two, were welcomed the long standing relationship between the two institutions and their close cooperation. Ethiopian Finance Minister Ahmed Sheikh, who is in charge of the privilegiation of Ethiopian state owned enterprises, including Etio Telecom, welcomed Djibouti Telecom's performance in the cooperation between the two countries' telephone operators. The Minister of Finance of the Federal Republic of Ethiopia arrived in Djibouti to take part in the board meeting of the Binational Railway Company, Etio Djibouti Railway of which he is the chairman. Under the leadership of the Minister of National Education and Vocational Training, Mustafa Mohamed Mahmoud, the inter Court of English in collaboration with the Embassy of the United States in Djibouti, organized the closing ceremony of the week uh, English in Djibouti. The event, which took place at the People's Palace, was attended by several personalities, including the Minister of Higher Education and Research, Dr. Nabil Ahmed Mohamed, and his colleague in charge of housing, urbanism, and environment, the UNDP representative, Mrs. Fatima El Sheikh, and a diplomat from the American Embassy. Distinguished guests and dozens of middle school students enjoyed the cultural entertainment and the skits. Prepared for the occasion, the skits emphasized the interest and value of the English language in a globalized world where the language of Shakespeare is the tool of communication by excellence. This was the very meaning of the plea of the Minister of National Education and Vocational Training, Mustafa Mohammed Mahmoud, who we call the importance of this English which week, pardon me, which is celebrated for the first time in Djibouti. This week of English is part of the commemoration of the 20th anniversary of the reform of our education system and demonstrates in more than one way the growing importance of the place of the English language in education, but also in professional life in Djibouti. The American Diplomat and the UNDP representative shared the message of promoting English language in the country with the young people who came in large numbers to participate in this ceremony. Um, the promotion of English language learning for Djiboutians of all ages is a priority of the U.S. Embassy. Um, English is not only a highly employable skill that makes Djibouti's people and economy more competitive, but it's also a means of building bridges between the people of Djibouti, the people of the United States, and the rest of the international community. The Ministers of Higher Education and Housing highlighted the importance of the English language in trade and communication in an increasingly interconnected and globalized world. Let's listen to them. My brother, friend, the Minister of Education for this very good initiative. I think that uh, with this initiative, I will earn a lot of money in the higher education. You cannot, you cannot know or imagine how money I'm spending to make our students speaking English. So now, then, when they will come to higher education, they are ready to speak English. So good luck for all of you, and uh, please fight for your diversity. Djibouti is a very diverse country. Our wealthy is our diversity. Our wealthy is the, this diversity of languages that we are speaking. I promote today English because as I am Minister of Tourism, we have a lot of tourists coming from abroad. So uh, they are speaking most of them English. You are the future of Djibouti. I congratulate you. The Minister of National Education stressed the importance of English in view of the geographic position of our country in an English-speaking region at the crossroads of continents and world maritime trade. Hence, the interest in straining the mastery of English among young Djiboutians to be in line with the vision of 2035 for the development of the country, according to the political will of the President, Mr. Ismail Omar Gelle. Let's listen to him. Dumont. Djibouti. For this special occasion, we have with us in the studio Mrs. Sumaya Ali, the, educational, uh, the education teacher of the ministry, to give us more depth about this special week. Welcome with us, Mrs. Sumaya. Thank you. Welcome to our studio and thank you, and we are glad to have you with us here today. Can, first things first, can you please uh, first give us an overview or more details about this week? Yeah, thank you for giving me this 
uh, okay. time to express myself. Uh, yeah. You can so surely this present week, yourself. Yeah, my name is Maya yeah. and I'm an English teacher from Gabotuan Middle School right. and also a member of the technical team and in charge of communication. Mm -hmm. So to yeah. uh, I'm going to yeah. answer to your question. So yeah. this week we had organized mm -hmm. so many English clubs activities mm -hmm. in most of our college mm -hmm. and high schools. We had to select the best ones, those who were part of English clubs, and they had to compete between uh, among, among them yeah. before we, co we select those students to compete uh, to, uh, with other schools the students. Mm -hmm. So today was the closing, gr the great closing ceremony of, for all that. And what was um, the, when was the starting of the ceremony? No. It was a yeah. week ago, right? Yeah, okay. but let me say one thing. This mm. is not the English club or the English uh, day, as we can call it, has seen its, its light uh, last year. Oh. Last year was we only celebrated in the, in the, yeah, in a one day event uh, in a hotel. Ah, okay. So con it's different uh, from this year because this yeah. was this year was this was a great uh, ceremony. Of course, and I, has, yeah. I am sure that the atmosphere was just outstanding. So moving to my second question, uh, you as a teacher, I wanted I wanted your opinion on um, like what do you think? What is the role of English in our society? Yeah, we all know, it's known by everyone, the importance of English. Yeah, that's it's, right. It's the first international language. Of course. So as a teacher, there are students who are very motivated to speak English. Mm -hmm. And we try to push them as teachers. But yeah, English is very important and we always remind them how important is English for their business, for the future. Uh, for the future opportunities, yeah, and if they want also to continue studies, uh, to study in international school, they need uh, to yeah. speak English. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, not, it's not only uh, French and Arabic. Uh, yeah. yeah. English so is the most important language, and they have to remind, to put that in their minds. So. I surely approve yeah. of that. So, the last but not least, uh, the place of English in, the, in our education policy, like, um, is English that important? Is that like you mentioned? It is the f like the first language in the whole world. But in Djibouti, is that the case? Do you see that? Or yeah, yeah. Okay. The globalized, uh, the globalized economy that made Djibouti a crossroad of commerce of the world. We know that here we have so many embassies, exactly, and most of them they speak in English. Yeah, and uh, commerce, Japan's. We have Japan's embassies yeah. speaks in English. So English is required if you want to apply for a job you need to speak you have to have the skills to speak in english yeah that's right all right so uh thank you mrs sumaya ali for uh being with us here again and really was uh it was very i was very glad for you to be here with us uh, and uh yeah thank you for giving us a whole overview uh, over the situation uh, thank you very it's much my pleasure it's my pleasure thank all you right, thank you so moving on to the nationals, on the occasion of the launching of the week of the Francophonie of 2021, integrated by Mu'min Hassan Beri, Minister of the Muslim Affairs of the Culture and the Goods Works, with the, uh, the participation of the Ambassador of France in Djibouti, it was presented to, to be in the French in New Institute of Djibouti, FD, an exhibition of uh, Muriel Fresco carried out by the purpose of the IDAC, the Djibouti New Institute of the Arts and Cinematography of the IDC. In his speech, the minister welcomed the, the excellent cultural cooperation between the existing cultural institutions in Djibouti and congratulated the, the actors of this cultural event. Uh, this collective work highlighting important themes such as reading, music, uh, painting, and cultural creation was aimed to demonstrate the mastery of uh, plastic arts by IDAC students and constituted a first in the field. This moral illuminated the space of the French Institute of Djibouti and is the result of the creation and professional maturity of the students of IDAC. The authors of this work benefited from the support of the IDAC teachers who were able to offer quality supervision. Finally, an exhibition of paintings by the IDC students were presented, as well as a comic strip of mangas in local colors created by young Djiboutian artists. The ceremony was attended by the Director General of IDAC, the Secretary General of the Ministry of Education, the Director of the French Institute of Djibouti, the Technical Advisor to the Minister of Culture, as well as numerous guests from the world of culture. The French ambassador to Djibouti then presented a speech in which he outlined the program of the Francophonie Week and stressed the rapprochement and straining of cultural cooperation between our country and France. 
On this occasion, the Minister of Muslim Affairs, Culture and Waqfs, Mu'min Hassan Berry, delivered a marvel speech, highlighting the importance of art in the development of the person and the aesthetics of society, as well as the fundamental role of the IDAC in the training in national culture and artistic production, and more particularly in the setting up of the Djiboutian cinematography, which from now on constitutes the spearhead of the national cultural development. Now, shifting gears was the international news. A car bomb explosion has killed at least eight people and injured more than 50 others near a police station in Harat, western Afghanistan. Afghan President, Afghani President Ashraf Ghani blamed the Taliban. The attack has not yet been claimed, but Afghani President Ashraf blamed the Taliban, saying they were continuing their war and that they were demonstrated once again that they have no intention of reaching a peaceful resolution to the current crisis. While Herat, one of the country's largest cities, remained under government control, it is surrounded by rural areas where fighting between Afghani and Taliban forces is raging. The UN Security Council on Friday condemned, in the strongest terms, the alarming number of attacks deliberately targeting civilians in Afghanistan. Council members also strongly encouraged the parties to the inter Afghan negotiations to, to confidence building measures, including the reduction of violence. That was it for our 9 p.m. news, our beloved viewers. Thank you for being with us and make sure to tune in next for the French version. Thank you very much and have a good night.